Hello cheapskaters, welcome to our channel. I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. If this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. We are so happy that you have been able to join us. Now, before we get started, I'm going to ask you, if you're not already a subscriber to our channel, to click that subscribe button below me and then click the bell and select how often you want to be notified of new videos on our channel. Doing this ensures you never miss out and you will be amongst the first in the entire world to view a new video. Today I'm in my kitchen. I'm standing at the bench and I am surrounded by appliances. I'm going to drop you down so that you can see just how surrounded I am. Just give me a second and let's see if I can do this. All right. Okay. Here's the first one. Now, you might be wondering why I'm surrounded by appliances when you know i'm not even an appliance fan i'd hardly call myself an appliance collector but these appliances these kitchen tools save me money time and energy in the kitchen every single day these are the kitchen appliances i use to prep food for cooking dinner or baking, or dehydrating, or bottling, or freezing, or pressure canning. These are my tools. I didn't think I had a lot of kitchen appliances, but when I sat down to prepare for this video, I realized that I actually have more kitchen appliances and tools than I realized. Huh. But, and this is a big but, they get used and they all serve a purpose. Some of them serve more than one purpose. So this is going to be the first video in a series I'm going to base around kitchen appliances and kitchen tools that save me money, time and energy. And hopefully they will save you money, time and energy or give you ideas on how to use what you have to save money, time and energy in the kitchen. Now it's the first in the series because I want to share the kitchen appliances I use to prep the food that comes into our house. Now my kitchen is a working kitchen but it's not big by any stretch of the imagination. It's a reasonable size. I've got used to working in it um, and it gets used to cook or bake or preserve sometimes all three at once every day. So everything in my kitchen has to serve at least one purpose or it's just taking up valuable real estate it's you know hiding in a cupboard collecting dust so in no real order let me tell you about the kitchen appliances and tools that i use and i absolutely love them now first off right here in front of us is my stand mixer now this one is a kitchen aid and i saved for two years to be able to buy this machine and then i waited until it came on sale now before that i had been using a sunbeam that was very 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 old it was about 50 years old and it's still going strong it is my backup stand mixer and when I'm doing big baking sessions with lots of cakes or biscuits or doughs, it comes out too. But this is my everyday workhorse. It really is a workhorse. It gets used you know, at least, at least three times a week for different things. Now, I especially love the dough hook that came with it because it does an absolutely brilliant job of mixing a double recipe of penny pinching pizza base. And I use it to make bread dough and cinnamon scroll dough too. And of course, for whipping and beating, for baking and other cooking. 
and I use it to shred chicken in just seconds. Now, the thing I absolutely love about this machine is the attachments. I have the pasta attachments and the sausage attachment. And oh, I just love them both. Now, here's my pasta. Here's my little pasta, handy dandy pasta attachment. This is the one that cuts the noodles. Oops. And I didn't get the sausage one out, but it's in the cupboard. Look, homemade pasta is, is it cheaper than buying it? Not necessarily, but it is so much nicer to have truly fresh pasta. And if you're going to make lasagna, making noodles with this attachment, so, so easy. And we can have fettuccine just about any any time because I've got that attachment too. Now, the sausage attachment is its just brilliant. I'm no expert sausage maker, but they are fun to make. And we do like to try new recipes. We usually do sausages over the summer and then we cook them on the barbecue. And so far, they've been really good. I've played around with a few different recipes and they're nicer and actually cheaper than buying them from the butcher. Have you tried to buy sausages from the butcher lately? They are jolly expensive. Now, the mixer sits on the bench near a PowerPoint and next to the sink, ready to go. It's in front of me so I know to use it. I don't forget about it. Now, the next kitchen appliance is my hand mixer. Let me just get these out of the way because they are heavy. And let me move this a little. This is my handy dandy hand mixer. Can you see that? Have I got it up high enough for you? It is wonderful. Now it's a Black & Decker. There you go. And it was a gift from my sister-in-law well over 30 years ago. And I love it. I absolutely love it. This is what I use to whip cream or beat eggs for six-minute lemon butter or to make pancake batter because I usually do two or three times the recipe for pancakes. It's small enough to fit in a drawer so it's easy to access. And that's the secret. If you have appliances you don't use, is it because they're too hard to get out or because you can't see them and you forget about them? I find that if something is in front of me, then I am more inclined to use it. If it's easy to get, I'm more inclined to use it. Otherwise, it's too hard and I can't be bothered. And I'm sure you're the same. We're all busy. We're all tired. We don't need to be thinking about all these things and where did I put it? Oh, do I have to clear space for it? Keep it in front of you, front and centre. You'll use it. Now, another appliance that I use almost every day is my food processor or, or this is one of them. Now I have two food processors. Let me move that out of the way. I have two food processors. I've got my tongue twisted. Um, can you see? This is easy. Easy peasy. Let me drop it down just a wee bit so you can see it. I'll bring it back over for you. Turn it around the right way. There we go. I have two. Now, I have a small Breville food processor that was an engagement present. And at the moment, Hannah is using it because she doesn't have a food processor. Now, over the years with that one, the various attachments have been broken so that we're just down to the blade. But it is still great for chopping and dicing and mixing. Um, and then, of course, this is mine that I use in my kitchen. I need a drink of water, guys. And I love it because it has a bigger bowl and the grating attachment, whoops, the grating attachment is so convenient when I'm um, processing a lot of something. I can chop a bag of onions in seconds or grate a bag of carrots in a minute great cheese in a couple of, a kilo block of cheese in a couple of minutes. Now, 
when I'm prepping the veggies for our weekly salads or to make pasta sauce or onions for caramelized onions or, or barbecue or tomato sauce or salsa, using the food processor saves so much time and so much energy. And it actually does save me money. It means that nothing goes wasted, is wasted. Um, another thing I have, and I didn't get it out, I'm sorry, is my coffee grinder. You've seen it in other videos. Now, I use the coffee grinder to grind the dehydrated food um, into powders or the apple peelings. The other day, I used it to make grind the apple peelings into powders. Of course, it gets used for grinding coffee beans too. And it's really, really good for mixing small quantities of seasonings to make um, taco mix or burrito mix or powdered sugar, something like that. And the coffee grinder is used yeah, at least once a week. And I think I'd be lost without it. It is one of those tools, one of those kitchen appliances that you don't realise it's handy until you don't have it. Another tool that I have in my kitchen that is great for food prep is this simple stick blender. Can't see it, sorry guys. Simple stick blender. This was um, from Kmart. I've tried all kinds of stick blenders over the years. I've had brand name ones, I've had Aldi ones, I've had um, what was there? The one that was all the rage years ago. Can't remember. This one does, it was like $20, $15 or something. And it's brilliant. It chops. It purees. Um, works well to make soap. It's really good. And it's a simple rinse. Make sure the blades in there are clean. And it's done and dusted. I like my stick blender. It gets used often too. And again, it fits in a drawer. Now, uh, I also have um, a couple of non-electric kitchen appliances or tools that I use reasonably often. And I know everybody's probably got one of these. Good old box grater. really is now i've broken the handles on this one but seriously it works really really well and it's so handy for grating just a carrot or half an onion or zesting if i need zest and that's the size i use if i'm doing um soap or soap powder this is you know i'll often put this in a bowl with the cakes of soap and just sit and watch a YouTube video while I'm grating the soap. It's really handy. Thomas uses this at least twice a week to grate cheese for whatever he is making, which works really well. And it goes in the dishwasher. Now, I did break the handle, but you know what? It still works. Might not look as pretty, but it still works. What else have I got? Oh, now, I have a mandolin. Um, I love it. This is my second one. Um, and it's brilliant. I don't have any issues with it. I've never cut myself. Um, never cut myself on it at all. On it. This one, all the one I had before was, it was orange. I think it was Bessemer that my mum gave me. Now I keep it in the box just to keep everything confined in the cupboard because then I just whip it out. Uh, let me see. Here it is. I'll take it out for you. So that you can see, it actually does come in a storage container, but I don't want to hang it on the wall, so I just use it like this. And I'll take it out for you. It has different blades. Now I'm nervous because I said I've never cut myself. I'm really, really nervous. Um, take off the safety shield. And there it is, ready to slice. 
This one is, you know, I don't know. If you follow the instructions and you use your guide, you don't get cut. Take your time. Don't race like, you know, a hooligan. You're not Fangio of the kitchen. And if it's used properly, it's just a safe and a whole lot faster than a knife. It's probably safer than a knife. Now, I used this to slice the oranges last week when I dehydrated them because it gives nice even slices. When you want to dehydrate something, you want them to be as even as possible. Um, you don't want, yeah, with a knife you can try, yeah, it's not always that easy. It only took me like you know six minutes to slice five kilos of oranges. It actually took longer to arrange them on the trays in the dehydrator than it did to slice them. It makes great onion rings when the onions are too big for the food processor too. Now, this particular mandolin has a greater fitting and a chip or rather a shoestring fries type fitting. And they've both been really handy for grating potatoes for hash browns and making fries for the freezer. It just gets rinsed off, put up to dry, and then it gets put away again. It's really handy. And I do take this, excuse me, <coughs> croaky throat. I do take this camping with us because, no, well, we do have power, but I don't want to waste it. And it makes my life easier too because sometimes these old hands just don't work the way um, they should. So these are my go-to kitchen appliances. They all get used every week at least once, often two or three times, depending on how much food I prep and what I'm doing. If you have a mixer or a food processor or mandolin or other handy tools and don't use them, ask yourself why. Why don't I use it? Is it because they're put away in the cupboard and you can't be bothered getting them out? Is it because you don't have the bench space to have them out? I don't have a lot of bench space either, but the stand mixer is always ready to go and the food processor, top shelf, front in the cupboard so it just gets lifted out and put up next to the PowerPoint so it can be used. It's easy to get to. It's not a drama so I can get it out, plug it in and away it goes. Um, hand mixer and stick blender in the drawer down here third drawer down that's where they live easy to get to there's the powerpoint I can use them I think sometimes we get a bit confused about what living the cheapskates way means and you know what living the cheapskates way doesn't mean you can't we can't make our lives easier by having tools and appliances it does mean that we need to choose the kitchen appliances and tools that will actually benefit our families and our budgets and save us money, time and energy. You know, there's a lot of appliances out there that I think, oh, wow, that's very handy, but I would never use it. If I'm not going to use it, I'm certainly not going to buy it. I know there are people who buy every appliance under the sun because it does a job. Then they put it in the cupboard. Sometimes they don't even take it out of the box. And it sits there. You don't, you know, that's wasting your money. It's wasting your time, wasting your energy. Now, you don't necessarily need to buy new appliances. I saved up for years, two years, for my stand mixer. Let me bring you up because otherwise you're just talking to my hand, aren't you? Is that better? Let me see. I saved up for two years. Sorry, guys. Okay, better. Whoops. Don't get seasick on me. Sorry. Shaky hands today. Still up. There we go. To get my um, stand mix up. But you can pick up secondhand appliances. Sometimes even find new appliances on marketplace and garage sales for a fraction 
of the cost. But however you get them, and remember I saved up to buy my stand mixer, the food processor was a gift, the um, stick blender came from Kmart, my hand mixer was a gift. Make sure you use them. Don't just put them in the cupboard and forget about them because if you don't use them, they're just very expensive dust collectors. Well, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I would love to know what your must-have food prep kitchen appliances are and how you use them. Please let me know in the comments below because I'm curious. And you know what? I might learn something. I learn something new from you guys every day. Come and teach me how to use a new appliance I or a new trick for using one. I want to know. I really, really appreciate you spending time watching our video. Fairly makes my heart sing. Before I go, please remember to like, subscribe and share. These three things help our channel to grow and make it easier to find. And the easier it is to find, the easier it is for us to spread the message that it's not only possible to live life debt free, cashed up and laughing, but absolutely okay and doable, even in the crazy world that's 2022. Now, I will be back very soon with part two of the kitchen appliance and tool series. But until then, happy cheap skating. And remember, get those appliances out and use them.